Oh, what a day. The time for some ham radio while traveling. Up next on AA3K on the go. Hello and welcome to another episode of AA3K on the go. Some of you may know, most of you do not, as I travel quite a bit for work and quite often from my home in the Philadelphia area up to uh, my business unit's main office in New York City, Long Island area. Actually, I'm about halfway out on Long Island. Since buying an F a Yesu FT817, I realized, well, that packs pretty smallly and a wire antenna out the window of the hotel and I can get a little bit of operating in while traveling. Most of it has been FT8, a few voice contacts and a CW contact or two. The FT817 is only 5 watts, so I am limited by that. And I'm limited by about 60 feet of long wire out the window, an antenna match, and a counterpoise inside the hotel on the, uh, on the floor of the hotel room, which doesn't help. So I'm going to give you a little rundown of the setup I use while traveling. And uh, hopefully make a contact with a co-worker who lives not so far from here and is... Uh, bought a QCX Mini and assembled it this past weekend and has gotten it on the air and is really starting to have the ham radio bug bite him after being licensed for uh, more than a couple of years without doing very much with it. So, let me uh, take a break, change my pants, and get the wire out the window. Okay, so for an antenna, I found the most convenient thing and effective thing to use is about 60 feet of speaker wire. Now I picked this up at a store that sells a lot of walls. Stripped it in half and fortunately being an engineer uh, I have access to our engineering lab and was able to solder the two halves together in, of 30 feet of speaker wire into one 60, uh, 60 foot length. Uh, for a weight I used a mostly empty bottle of hand cream and I wrapped it up in Camouflage duct tapes just make it disappear when it's hanging in the tree a little bit easier. Fortunately, this hotel has windows that open and let me throw this out the or lower it out the window and get it up into a bush or a tree that's hopefully outside the window. I typically stay at the same hotel, but not all the windows are conducive to being used. One had a screen in it and others sometimes just don't have a good far point to hang the antenna on. As for a counterpoise, I have about 30 feet of wire here. This is I just lay out within the hotel room. From using a small mag loop antenna, I find that within the hotel room, it is really a Faraday cage. I hear nothing. If the band is open, there's almost always FT8 traffic. I hear nothing but birdies. So I need to get at least one half of this antenna out. If I could get this out too, it would be a lot better but this would end up dangling down and coiling up in front of other windows below me. Fortunately, I'm on the top floor of the hotel this time. And since neither of these lengths of wire are resonant, I use a ZM2 antenna matching unit. Uh, and this gets me a good match for the FT817, which is the original model, which is a little bit, much, a little bit more sensitive to SWR mismatches. So I wanna make sure I take care of that rig and, able to keep it for a good long time. So my next effort is to get this out the window, hanging in the small tree bush outside the window on the ground, and get the 817 and the $60 laptop you may have heard about all set up. So I got the wire out the hotel room window, which didn't have a safety block on it, so I could open it quite wide and get a good swing on it. So good that the weight bottle with the camouflage tape flew off and went somewhere because with the camouflage I can't find it in the grass out there. I'll have to look again a little bit later when there are fewer people outside. The but the hotel comes to the rescue with another lotion bottle to use as a weight. So I got that out. Unfortunately the very tall shrub bush that's in front of the hotel room window is a little close to the building. So it's not stretched out as far as I would like it, but it is out there and uh, my co-worker only lives about 10-15 miles from here, so it should be an easy QSO to make. I have the counterpoise stretched across the hotel room floor. 
and the 817 hooked up to the ZMU2. So, give you a quick look see at the setup and the little iambic paddle that I'm using for this. Okay, here is the setup. I have my $60 computer, laptop computer, which is in, turning out to be a very well spent $60, light, easy to carry, uh, along with the radio and such. Kinder has the power to run FT8 and uh, the FT817 along with the MFJ QRP power supply, a little iambic here, my eyeglass case, and the ZMU antenna tuner. So let me get this all set up here and give uh, my coworker a text and hopefully uh, we can catch one of his first CQs live. I should say one of his first CW contacts live and recorded for posterity. Well, we failed. We couldn't hear each other. He has a dipole in his attic. I have the wire outside the window and not stretched out as, as well as I would like it. I'm also in the inside between two hotels. There's another one 100 feet at most across a central courtyard away from me, so that may have done part of it. So what, we, what will we do in the meantime? Let's try a little FT8 and see if we can uh, make a few QSOs here. And I called, answered one CQ, and I got a report back, and I was pretty weak, but to be expected, running only five watts. But looks like he does not hear me to finish the QSO. We'll give it a few more tries. Just received his signal that I'm a minus 24 in Echo November 22, and I am currently in Fox November 30, New York City, Long Island section. may take a little while. Okay, I'm no longer hearing him, and he's definitely not hearing me after the initial response to his CQ. So we'll try calling CQQRP on FT8 and see if we can get a couple of QSOs here. One thing on this $60 laptop, I do find its touchpad is RF sensitive. So I do have a Bluetooth mouse. This laptop has Bluetooth in it. So let me get that out and fire it up. That allows me not to uh, suddenly have spurious mouse inputs when trying to move things around on the touchpad. So I've also moved the counterpoise out the window, just let it dangling down the building. Uh, as I said, the antenna, the main part of the antenna, is not stretched out as much as I would like it. And I possibly could stretch it out a tree a little further out, but I kind of think the wire is going to be at that exact length. It's going to be just a couple of feet short of where it needs to be, let alone throwing it up in the tree and making sure nobody walks into the wire when they're walking underneath it. Oh, the challenges of amateur radio. But we rise to those challenges. Got a bite. Whiskey Alpha 6, Golf X-Ray Queen in Fox, Mexico 06. Very strong, minus zero 01.
and I'm a zero dBm. That is surprisingly good for approximately 426 miles. And another station is calling me. Let me see if I can bring the camera in closer to the screen here on the laptop. And he's in the log. Now let's try November Charlie 1 Papa Alpha. And they are in Fox Mexico 1 5. It's the only downside to this $50, $60 laptop is the screen is a bit on the small side and the eyes are getting older here. Looks like I may have lost him. We'll let this cycle complete and I'll call CQ again. Okay, we'll call CQ again. The challenges of QRP. very dependent upon antennas and propagation and perseverance. And FT8 is not as easy as everybody makes it out to be. It is a low power mode, but at QRP levels, definitely can take you a little while. I did an activation at Jones Beach State Park, a POTA activation at Jones Beach State Park, and it took me, though it was a Friday morning, and yes, there are many people and many hams at work, it still took me about 50 minutes to make my 10 QSOs and get a few more insurance QSOs on top of that. And that was all FT8, the FTF817 here to an NFED halfway. However, I was at the fishing pier area just off the bay and I'm sure that the ground underneath me was quite saturated with uh, salt water. this. We'll see if we get any responses. It's not too late, but I do still have a little more work to do. Unfortunately, my job is never ending. Okay. okay. We're going to try a little bit more. But this is basically what I use for setup for my amateur radio setup when I'm traveling and driving and can easily bring the 817 with me as well as the $60 laptop. And I'll give a review of the $60 laptop, but if you find something similar, 1.1 gigahertz, dual or quad core, Celeron CPU for the eight gigs of memory, 
you know, 40 to 60 gigs of quote unquote hard disk space on the computer. I'll tell you, it's worth it. They can run FT8, it can run your logging programs, and for something to carry that's barely two pounds, whoa, I got a bite, stand by. And it's a CQDX, it also comes up in a reddish color, which threw me off here. Um, if you need a lightweight, portable laptop, there are other models besides this Evolve 3 that uh, run you uh, somewhere around 80 to 120 dollars. Um, I'm finding it very worthwhile. I needed to actually, it has a built-in camera. I needed a picture of myself for something last night and I was able to get a face shot through the built-in software, it's Windows, and uh, upload it to the site and take care of that. Uh, otherwise I would have had to use my cell phone, email the picture to myself and send it up there. My wife had to do something similar and she found out the resolution from her cell phone was too high. She had to work through knocking it down. So thanks for joining me on this little mobile amateur radio adventure and we'll catch you next time on AA3K on the go.